Welcome back to the next part. The last time we prepared the ramps board on the Arduino Mega and today uh, we're gonna put the firmware on it and try to get the LCD display to work. Now if you get the PQ kit and you use it without a heat bed you don't have to do this. If you get it with a heat bed and you want to use the PQ firmware you have to uh, compile it yourself or do it similar to here but using a specific Arduino version. They kind of dropped the, the easy support for the Pro's R3 in my opinion and went more to the Hephaestus 2 in the width box. I want the Marlin firmware on it, like the original one without the PQ, any PQ changes. I don't know what, what exactly they changed but I don't, I just want the basic Marlin so I can update later on and I know what I changed. And uh, it's gonna be interesting, so let's see. Let's uh, close all the windows and start with a fresh browser. Well, as fresh as the browser opens on my end. So, we're gonna go for Marlin firmware and we want the GitHub. So, it's easy to find. We say clone or download. And we say download zip and we're gonna save it on the desktop. Okay, that looks good. Now we're also gonna open a Google page and gonna say uh, Marlin firmware and a full graphics smart controller. There we go. I heard sometimes it's hard to get it to run, but we'll see. I did it before, but I uh, I want to try something, but I, I don't remember details. I should have made notes. So well, we're gonna extract it here. As you can see, on the right upper part, it's right dark. So let's plug in the Arduino, and it's just gonna show blue. There's nothing on it. Here we get the Marlin RC. I don't like all the subfolders, so in the Marlin folder we ha should have an Arduino file. There we go, the Marlin one. Now depending on what stepper driver boards you use, you might have to adjust the steppers. I'm not gonna do it in this one, because I have to see if it if those that I have I set it to 16 steps, so it should work out of the box, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll, find, we'll see. Okay, let's see. We should have a configuration H, which is here. And so, let's go through it. There's some links on how to calibrate and stuff. Look at those, those are really good. I looked at some, and, and I think I know the, the most things I need to show it and get started. But I would strongly recommend looking through the things and getting ideas. Usually when something doesn't work out, I'm gonna go googling. Now the first thing is I want the baud rate of 115-200. I'm not gonna use you, but Then here it's a RAM spot 1.4 and the, uh, on the board itself is extruder, then the fan and then the, the heat bed. So this is perfectly fine. I don't have to change any things. If you like have something different, if you go to marlinfray.org, I think. Oh, didn't take the MA. Marlinfray.org. Let's try. Yeah. Oh, actually, it was exactly that. If you go to the Marlin page, there is like getting started documents, and you can download this from here also and the documentation on configuring where you're gonna have explanations and, and info on every single setting. So it's all there on the net and it's free. And they also have like uh, the list of the boards so when you go into this was board weight configure version firmware info Motherboard, there we go. 
So we have ramps from Botfear and uh, extruder fan bed. But if you have like dual extruders and fan and no heating bed, you just have to put in that that value. Now uh, custom machine name, oh just for the hell of it. We're gonna call this reprinter Matilda. We have one extruder. Then this is extruders, power supply we have ATX. I'm gonna show this in a later video. I think this is, yeah there we go, no power switch, one ATX. If you haven't connected the PS on pin, no I don't, do it. okay so it's zero cause we manually switch it on and off. If you want it automatic it would be like one for ATX and two for the Xbox one. No idea why anybody would use an Xbox, oh well. I don't need to know. We use 100k to misters. So these are the number one. And we have like one for the sensor zero for the extruder. And we also have one for the bed. So the temperature. It's all stuff that we should have changed there. We have minimum temperatures and maximum temperatures. I'm gonna leave it with the default. Actually, I'm gonna put the bed to 100. The rest. 75 is kind of hard. Uh, oops. Again, look at the hardware you have and, and just find it a little bit hard to max temp. Min temp 5 is fine here. I think the other printer have it like on 15 or something and in winter in the workshop when I come in the morning and I start the heater, sometimes it can read a little bit less than 15. So. Let's have the blow hot air on it. <laughs> so with five, I think this will not be a problem. Okay, pit settings we'll leave alone. Runner bear protection is enabled, which basically says if whenever the short circuit and just pumps, it will disconnect it. Okay, and stops. Uh, I'll leave it at default if there is any problems. You can invert the f here to different singles and stuff. I mean, these settings, this are, you can upload it later on with the changes while the printer is assembled, because you're gonna have to very likely the USB cable running to it for uh, the software, unless you always use an SD card, which is not very likely because it's inconvenient. Then you have to like hook it up again. But I usually have it hooked up to the computer so I can make little changes later on. Okay. So let's see. Right now, what I'm looking for is the LCD displays, bed leveling, auto bed leveling, additional features. Let's see. I probably jumped over it by accident. Oh no, LCD and support. LCD language English is perfectly fine. LCD type. Now it's getting interesting. Where do we see the... My mouse is squeaking, the mouse wheel, wow. Never noticed. Okay, uh, where is it? Oh, there we have the BQ smart controller. That we don't use. Wrap up this control graphics smart controller. That should be the right one. That should be the right one. Smart is small. This the full graphic that I have. Mm, speaker. A buzzer with fixed frequency. That's what I think I have. I don't find the SD card thing. Let's see extra features. Server delay, no that's not it. Somewhere in there must be the SD card on. Does it change? Did you used to have a setting that says SD card on or off? SD card enabled, CRC. Uh, that's the CRC for the SD card itself. There as defined SD support. 
So I have an SD slot, so. Okay, I think I have the images out on the DFF but I'll see you six number four. Okay. Full graphic based, so I think I have to do this one. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, so that should be everything needed for now. So we're gonna see if it can compile or if it's missing something. Oh, yeah, well, true. Board is an Arduino Mega. It's a 2560 and it's COM3. Let's try again. Okay, there is an error. Apparently we do missing the library. Okay. So let's see. Oh, do I remember the line? Is there my cursor there? No. Oh, it's a completely different part now. Configuration H, that's where we are. Okay. So let's get the library. Download zip. Save as desktop. So we have the library here. Okay. So we go to the documents folder. Arduino. Libraries. Copy it over here. Okay. Let's see. I think if it's in library, it, it, it finds it itself. If not, we have to add it. Let's see. Compiling sketch. It's getting there. Getting there. Well, come on. Come on, do we need to have to add an hamster to the computer? This computer is a couple of years old, but it should be able to like compile that. It was not, it was a, a kind of, it was a very good machine back then when I got it. There we go, as soon as I grabbed the coffee cup, it was done. Okay, so the compiling worked. So we can start uploading it. Let's make it so we see what's happening. That's the display, it's just bright, but we'll see when something changes. Let me see if I can get a better angle on it. Is it a little bit better? Nah. Well, it will do. It will do. So we say upload. If you go with the standard RAM stuff, mostly this thing is, is running out of the box. It's only minimum changes. There we go. Uploading. Did it do it? Oh, still working on the upload. Still working on the upload. Most of the stuff works out of the box. Uh, what you have to might look into is is the stepper settings, which is uh, explained on the configuring. Where do we have it? The side plates. Come on. Configuration, stepper drivers, which tells which stepper drivers are there, disabling the direction if you have the wrong direction, you can change it. If there's end stop, bounce, etc. So, well, we see it's done uploading. And as we see here, I'm gonna try to get a better picture. But as we can see, uh, I have like 
wonder if I can do something about the lighting of all of the lamp there right now. But I think you can see that it says Marlin. Let me just hold the camera, maybe get a better. Oh, it's just too bright. Hang on, let me get try to get more light there so we see it better. Start making it better with the lights on. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And it says, can you see it like that now? I have to get a different camera for that. Well, it says the zero degree on the bed, zero degree on the extruder, the fan is not spinning. It has like question marks on the codex, it's 100% ready. Uh, the SD card is zero. And down there it says the custom name Matilda. I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can do something with your cam. Uh, edit settings. Maybe we can improve that. That's not the settings for the video devices now. No, that's not what we wanted. Yeah, of course not. Device, change device to Logitech. Oh, no, it starts. But I can see Matilda ready. So, we got that working now. As you can see, it says zero degrees here. So let's check really quick. Ramps one four four to Mister. Thank you, Rob, for the picture. T zero and T one. So let's add some termistors to that. I got some prepared. One and two. Okay, then. so let's make a reset. Shows the Marlin logo, so that's working nicely. And it does not show the temperature. Which might be because I don't have 12 volts on the ramps board, so let's hook up the temperature on the ramps board. Maybe that's the problem. No, it shouldn't be. Let's see. Just a thing, it still shows zero degrees. Hmm, that's odd. That is odd, the Tamis is on the right jumpers. So let's see if we forgot something. But the LCD is working, that's the main thing. Let's go completely back up and let's see if we added the Tamisters. Portrait, extruder, thermal setting. It was 1400k to misters. And we put them in here, zero 01. And for the bed. So we did put them in there. I have no idea what those dummy to Mr. Velders are for. Okay, well, we put it in. Never for production machine. Okay. Oh, well, let's undefined the dummy thermistors and see if that's making a difference. Oh, this is just if you use nine and eight values up there. I see. I see. These are the values if you actually use those thermistor numbers in here. Which we have like a one. Of course, there's always a chance that my 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 two misses are bad, which I don't believe. But there's always the chance on that. So notice all looks good. So 
So where is my window? So we see Matilda. I have to really see what the issue is. But what we can do is we can connect to it using Pantherface. Okay. 152 and 2. Connecting. Okay, so as you can see, it restarts. Let me get up there a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now we can kind of see it. Uh, the XYZ is probably because there's no end stops attached and no motors. So maybe it needs this in order to show the temperature. I have to look at that. So let's say we want to see it off, no errors, and then let's say PLA and heat bed to 60, set, set. Ah, there we go, min temperature halt it. So it does not read the thermistors. Okay, I have to look at that hardware, see if everything's okay. Because it says it's the, it has the min temp. Well, so for now, this is, uh, I will show it later on if I find the error on what it was. I'm pretty sure it's not the settings. Uh, so we covered installation of the ramps, uh, firmware on the Arduino Mega. You can have a look there, but there is this, he knows there should be two sensors and there should be 100k, so I have to see maybe the sensors that I they had a lying around a bed or something. So this concludes the end of the video. Uh, it's the first time that I do the desktop recording like this, so I hope the quality is okay. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next part where we actually put the electronics on the printer and hook everything up. Right now I just have to wait for uh, the cable chain because if it's going to take very long I will just for, for showing it put everything together without but I would prefer to have everything running the proper way. So uh, hope I could help a little bit out and even if it's just with those links. Again it, it's the GitHub for the Marlin firmware. It's There is an old section on the wrap-up smart controller that basically, I guess, yeah, changed that and installed it the library we did that. Then there is the Marlinx uh, uh, page itself that I probably have to, well, probably, if, if the term is okay, I'm going to have to look into that, find out what I have to change. If there's any changes software side, I will make a note in the next video, which is www. no, not even, it works without, marlinfirmware.org. No W's for a change. And uh, that's just a GitHub. I hope it helps somebody with the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!